<laughs> Hello, welcome to Lada. I know other people are going to uh, catch me on that pronunciation, but I don't care. Um, so today we're going to do my book club pick of uh, The Killing Mood by uh, N.K. Dem Demison? Jemison. And yeah, so we're going to talk about that. Um, my first thoughts are I really read through this book really fast. Um, it was really easy to read and I really I enjoyed the the world building. It was quite different in a way, sort of modeling itself off um, like Egypt, for example. But in comparison to her other works, like um, the Broken Earth trilogy and um, her fifth season, those kind of books. I think I connected with the characters a little bit more in those books than this one. Um, I think the main person I really liked was a hero, um, the main Gabra sort of character. But overall, quite enjoyed it. So yeah, that's my preliminary thoughts. So Elizabeth, you want to talk about it next? Sure. Um, I actually mostly agree with you on this one, Liv. I, I thought the world building was really interesting and that drew me in a lot. Um, but I found the characters maybe a little bit flat, um, especially her female characters. Um, and uh, I don't think it was one of her best. Um, I think this was one of her earlier uh, works. Um, and yeah, I think she's, she's not quite as um, uh, nuanced and... and uh, well developed as, as some of her other work. Um, particularly the villain, the villain was, I mean, a bit like over the top and maybe not especially convincing, I guess, just kind of generic cartoon villain um, in some respects. So yeah, so like enjoyable enough read, very readable um, and a, a decent pace, but yeah, not one of her better works. Yeah. All right, Kirsten, how did you go? Um, well, probably pretty similar. I, I did the audio book. I don't know if other people did. Um, and I found it took me a while to get into it. Um, partly I was having trouble remembering who was who with some of the characters and I think it could be me not remembering people's names for a <laughs> like I'm always bad with remembering names but I do find it easier if I've seen them written and when it's when it's audio I'm, I struggle more and there were a few characters who had similar sounding names that got me confused at the beginning and I it's now been a while since I read it and I've forgotten everybody's name but um I, I quite I really I agree I really liked the um the setting and I thought that the the magic system was really interesting and um like the religion aspect was really interesting, but I didn't really care that much about the characters. So I think that's pretty similar to what you guys have said. But yeah, I did enjoy it. I kept, you know, it wasn't it wasn't something that was a chore to read or anything like that. So, um, but yeah, I agree that um, the Broken Earth trilogy is definitely a better a better set of books. But I think that's why they won so many awards too, you know, so it's a lot to compare it to that. So yeah, overall pretty good, but not my favourite of hers. Yeah. Like talking about characters, I think pretty much the main person who got a lot of characterization was a hero. I felt everyone else sort of, I don't know, went to the wayside, especially Sanandi, who you'd thought- Is that time? There's a mat, a wild mat. Um, that um, means it's time for me to go and say goodnight to my children, but I'll be back. I'll listen while I'm gone. <laughs> yeah, all good. And, yeah, it's, especially the villain, you would think that there'll be a lot more, I don't know, more dimensions to him, but he was pretty much this a hero's brother, but you would think there was a bit more tension between that, but it wasn't really. He just felt really flat and just villainy. Um, and then, um, are you familiar with Naruto, um, Liv? Little bits and pieces. I never really watched it as a okay. kid. It's just, uh, the, the villain in this, uh, reminds me a bit of one of the villains in that, especially like through his motivation and that sort of thing for what he's doing. 
Mm. Um, which is fine, but like not really what I'm looking for. I don't know. Yeah. And also at the very end when it's revealed who the Reaper is, who he was sort of a hero's mentor, I don't really care. I don't know. You would think there was a bit more connection and you go, oh, that's a bit of a revelation, but it just felt quite flat. When Wait, we've had no exposure to that particular character before. Like, no. like they only just they kind of refer to him a little bit in passing, um, but like he's not particularly built up much. And so when the revelation happens that uh, the Reaper is his character, you're like, okay, that's yeah. Okay. Like it is shocking for the hero because they had a they had a relationship and, and you kind of get a little bit of a secondhand kind of emotion from that, but it's not like it do, hasn't got quite the impact for the reader that it might have otherwise. No, like you would think maybe to um, have parallels between Nigeria's, um, Nigeri, is that how you say his name? Nigeria and a hero's and a hero's and Uwani's uh, relationship. Justin, maybe you can weigh in on pronunciation for us. Yeah. What the, how did they pronounce it? <laughs> Yeah, I think they're all pretty. So Ahiru, I'm pretty. I did like this. Has been a while too. Najiri, Sunandi. I'm look. I'm trying to find a list of names because I've forgotten them all. But I, I didn't see them written. But when I'm seeing them written, that's kind of how I would have imagined them written. So I think oh, I need to find a page that's got like a list of characters. <laughs> but yeah, it's um, I don't know. I wish there was just a bit more development with the characters. Um, but the world was interesting. And I'm, I'm not sure if I would read the second book because I think it's a duology, isn't it? It is, yeah. yeah. Uh, the second one is set a little while later. Yeah. And I, I'm not sh- I don't know. There's, I don't think there's any, well, if there's any overlap with characters, it doesn't seem obvious at the beginning. Yeah. But otherwise, and I, I don't know, the whole mystery with the Reaper, I thought it was going to be more creepier, like creepy, but it was just, bang, it's scary villain time. But, um, mm-hmm. yeah, I don't know. Do you guys have any more thoughts about that? I feel like this is going to be a very short conversation. <laughs> Kirsten? Um, I don't know. I don't know. Um, yeah, sorry. <laughs> don't draw a blank. It has been a little while since I finished it. I finished it a bit too early, I think, because I was trying to make sure I wasn't, I think because we pushed this back a little bit too. Um, mm. So um, I've forgotten a lot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I am. Um... The only thing I keep on thinking, every like, every time I pick a freaking book for this book club, I don't like it that much. <laughs> well, I like it in somewhat, but I don't, you would think that I wouldn't really enjoy it, but I, damn it. <laughs> uh, I need well, to pick a Juliet Marillia book next time. I'm here for it. I'm yeah. partway through the book I picked and I'm not liking it that much. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Which hey, one is that it? one? The Style um, Sea by Erin Morgenstern. Oh, that's next one's, yeah. I need to start reading that. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Um, yeah, I uh, I did find his, um, as a female figures in this book, particularly flat. Um, well, really, there was only Sanandi, and I suppose Lynn, in a way. But Sanand, I don't know. I just did, I thought I would like Sanandi. Yeah, I didn't really too. care about her. <laughs> she she was not a nice person. Like, no. and I mean, like there there's there's levels. Like, obviously that that is kind of a difficult issue because you know characters shouldn't necessarily have to be likable necessarily, yeah. and especially female characters have often kind of got that that burden laid on them, I suppose. But uh, she just. She, yeah, she was at least, um, she was at least good at what she did, though. Yeah. Mm. Good little spy, good little politician. Mm. But, um, 
Yeah, but it was at the same just... time. It kind of felt like she she never really did much as well at the same mm. time. Like yeah. she's pretty much just a vehicle to get the the two. Um, uh, uh, what did they have? They refer to them gatherers. Gatherers, yeah. She's yeah. pretty much just a way to get the two out gatherers information and then get them out of the city. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. And also that bit where we're sort of leading towards the whole ambush in the desert and like perspective of the enemies and then them, et cetera, and the vision that things are going to happen. This went, and then it all happened. It just was all of a bit of a rush. And I went, oh, okay. Right here. The thing that I found most interesting about that whole sequence was the whole moral dilemma about, um, what's his name? What was the, what was the guy's name? Um, who was the, the, gather, the gatherer um, yeah. that uh, that he was, you know, needed to gather. How I don't remember exactly how they described it, but like he needed the dream. Was the dream blood or dream? dream? Blood. Yeah, yeah. He needed the dream blood too. And yeah. and there was the old woman that was sort of she was dying, and it was like he was wanting to gather her and she was like nope um i'm staying to the last minute i don't care if um, i'm dying anyway and i don't care if i'm in pain i'm gonna hang out hang on to the last minutes of my life and i thought it was really interesting that that moral dilemma of like they think that they're doing a people a favor by gathering them you know when they have terminal illnesses and things like that but this woman that was like nope i don't want to and and I liked that he respected that. And I thought that was a really interesting plot point. Like it was the little details like that, that I found more interesting than the mm. main plot. Definitely. Yeah. I think that sort of like brings into that question of, um, oh, what's the word, you know, here when like what other people are trying to, like, to oh, I can't, what is the you word? Mean euthanasia. Euthanasia. Yeah. I should know this because mum is friends with the lead guy who's trying to push it. Um, but it sort of makes you question um, like people in terminal illness and their well, choices. It comes down like a choice, everything. doesn't it? Yeah. It comes down to choice. And it did kind of present both sides of the argument quite well in that sense. Mm. Um, like, like you they, they have like the, the almost riot when they get to the the next country over. I've forgotten what it was called, but but they have all the all the people come around Nahiru um, asking for like mm. asking for him to help them to heal them or uh, in one case uh, for euthanasia um, and like it is presented as something that is wanted and uh, that is wanted. Mm. Um, but then it's counterbalanced by this, uh, this older lady when they're traveling through the desert. So you kind of do get both sides there. And that also that, that other balance of, which is the argument that in real life for youth, for you for and against euthanasia in that, how do you know that that person has really given consent? Um, because they had that thing where that he's like, well, I was given this contract to go and take this person. And I just assumed that it was on the up and up, but actually it's just someone who's trying to bump somebody else off. And he's just the, the pawn that's being used to do that. And it was quite interesting. I thought that was yeah, an interesting idea as well, that he thinks he's only doing good and he's only doing this to, for pe to people that actually want it. But then there's people higher up than him that are pulling strings that yeah. he doesn't know about. And so he, he thinks of himself as a priest and like by the standards of society he is, but someone is also using him as an assassin. Mm. And then he sort of questions that when, when he botches up that second thing at the start of the, uh, the book and the person goes, they're using you. And he, he goes, oh, and he sort of questions himself throughout the process and partly that's how he botched it up. But, yeah. Hmm. So, yeah, there was just definitely lots of interesting elements to the book. Um, it's, yeah, I just am a reader that needs to connect to the characters pretty early on to really, really enjoy a book. 
and I tend to really enjoy the books where I really like, not, not necessarily like, like I don't need my characters to be perfect. I don't like characters that are, you know, just the hero that never does anything wrong kind of characters, the Mary Sue type characters, but I like to be able to connect them in some way and care about what's going to happen to them. Whereas I didn't feel that way too much with this one, except maybe towards the end. Um, but yeah. Yeah, I'm sort of the same. Um, there's a thing around like the booktube and to the um, like the book blogger community, like one of those tags and you have, and one of the questions is uh, how would you rank your favourite parts of a story is that the characters, the plot and the writing. For me, it starts with characters, then it's the plot and then it's the writing. Mm. If I'm I, if I'm not connected with the characters, even if like they may not be likeable, um, I can still connect to them if they're likeable because I just want to know why. Um, so, yeah. Mm. It's important yeah, I'm that. The, I, I would say I'm the same. Um, great writing is one thing but if i don't care about it then i just get bored so yeah um, one of the other things i thought was really interesting in this was the um the relationship between the student and the teacher mm -hmm. or the apprentice and the master gatherer i don't remember what their titles were but i thought it was really interesting um so what we hang on remind me the names of the the, the younger one and the older one it was Najiri, the younger one, and a hero, the older one. Yeah. So Najiri was in love with um, a hero, a hero, a hero. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I really liked that it didn't go anywhere. I really liked that he was like, I understand that he, I can see that he's in love with me, but our relationship is too much of a power dynamic that it wouldn't be, you know, an age difference too, which isn't as important, but the, the, the power dynamic between them, he sort of recognised that, look, I get how he feels, but that can't be a thing that can happen, which I thought was, I thought it was good because I, I kind of didn't see that coming. I thought, oh, they're going to turn this into a romance, but I thought it was interesting to see a one-sided thing that wasn't, didn't become, turned into a romance? I don't know. Do you guys know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah. yeah, I know what you're talking about. Like, and it's not a romance per se, but he is, like, he he is acting out of love all the time. Um, and that is, like, a really crucial thing for Nahiru to get him, like, through, um, through this ordeal kind of thing. Um, if, if his apprentice hadn't been there, like... Mm. <laughs> It would have been terrible. Um, so, so yeah, like, so it's not a romance exactly, but it is, um, it is a love story, I guess. Mm. Mm. Yeah, it's just, just that, that they have different forms of love. Yes. In a way. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Like I would say that Ihiru did love Najiri, just not in the same, like I think Najiri had more of a romantic kind of love for him um whereas i feel like the hero's feelings were more kind of fatherly if if that makes sense i don't know yeah, um, yeah. and it's inter interesting that you make sort of parallels because near nigeria at the very start he throws this little um statue of the i think it's an erect penis or whatever it is across the room because people are making fun of his sort of well, he was given Wait. it by an, in an appropriate person. Yeah, it was yeah. that was the teacher that was trying to, yeah, basically, yeah. Um, he, and then when he reported it, it was like, you should have reported this earlier or I can't even remember exactly. Well, he, didn't, basically... he didn't report it per se. Like, they kind of cornered him into it. Yeah. Yeah. And then they kind of blamed him a bit. And I was annoyed by that because, you know, like yeah. if you hadn't said anything, then all these other boys could have been hurt as well. And it's like, yeah, but well, some people, not... some people feel like they don't have that choice. No, exactly. And I thought it was unfair of them to kind of put it on him and make it sound like 
uh, yeah, I felt like that was victim blaming a little Definitely. bit. Definitely, um, yeah. And if they knew about it already, why weren't they doing anything about it? Yeah. Yeah. Makes you think like what it's like now, in these times as well, because that happens as well. Mm. Yeah. Well, it's usually why people get away with it is because the per people are afraid to report things because they're in a, the other person's in a position of power. Mm. And I suppose that's interesting when you compare that thing at the start of the book to how a hero treats um, the jury and mm. their relationship. Doesn't want to make it, it a piece of power. Kind of. Uh, uh, and then you have like a different dynamic altogether with uh the pharaoh and um what's her name yes begins with this charis so uh, that one sandra see this is the ones i got confused between because there was two that had a name that started with s and i kept being like who was sontai who was part of the um gather of people and i think all i remember from him was him asking, do you want to be with us or do you want to be with a hero? And the jury's like, I want to be with a hero. Oh, that's the gatherer, yeah. No, I was thinking yeah. of the lady, the main uh, lady. Sanandi? Sanandi, yeah. So the pharaoh yeah. and Sanandi, their kind of relationship at the beginning of, of the book, um, if you're looking at kind of sexual relationships with uh, skewed power dynamics, that's definitely a big one. Mm. Mm. But it doesn't really um, delve into that relationship more than what it was that first scene in the mm. book. Apart from him going, I just want to kill her now. Pretty much. Um, but the, there were lots of kind of loose threads a bit like that. Um, I'm just trying to think. Like the, um, the courtesan lady, um, she was... Uh, one of the, um, she was a type of priestess. A sharer. A sharer, yeah, that's yeah. it. Um, and, like, she, she meets um, Nadiri at the, the kind of the solstice festival um, and is kind of, like, taking him about and, and explaining him to him, you know, how to to study people and, and that sort of thing. Like she comes up a couple of times, but she's always just a plot device. I was really disappointed that they never kind of went anywhere with her. Mm. The thing is, I don't actually really remember her. So that tells you mm. how flat that was. Yeah, because she, uh, yeah, she helps him out just at the Solstice Festival, just gets him to like, pay attention to people and listen and that sort of thing and then she rests uh when uh they have uh when the the phoenix guard i think it was sun phoenix guard something like that uh when the when the pharaoh's guards take uh nahiru prisoner uh and he's trying to search all the guard houses to find out which one he's in um and one of the guards starts hitting on the jury she's she comes along and rescues him in her palanquin mm. um and, but like that's that's kind of about it it's just these little kind of like plot device functions that she's she's serving um which was disappointing because she seemed like a really interesting character yeah yeah the, there's a lot of improvements this book could make but i think yeah it must have been one of her first books I wonder yeah, if I think it might have been her debut. Yeah. Because it could have... Sure? Um, I, I know... Second second series, I think. I'm pretty not sure the 100,000... Uh, the, uh, not 100,000... No, 100,000 Kingdoms. I'm pretty sure that series, which is a trilogy, came before it. Okay. Yeah. I did prefer that one. So, but yeah, I suppose. Not everyone's going to be perfect for each of their books. So, it's fine. Takes a while to build skill. Yeah, I'm doing NaNoWriMo this year, I've decided. Very exciting. So we'll see. Yeah, um, I don't know if there's any much more I can add to 
this discussion, despite being the person who picked the book. <laughs> Unless you guys have anything more to add. No, I'm sorry. I'm being very sad about this tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I um, But yeah, I think I, I did read it. I finished it a while ago and I have forgotten a few things and it is sort of coming back to me as we talk about it. But I think I've already kind of brought up the couple of things that I really found interesting. Mm -hmm. Elizabeth. Oh, I did quite like, um, like the dream aspects were quite interesting. I thought mm. as well. Um, again, playing into that whole, whole world building, like the, the ancient Egyptian setting with this kind of dream world on top of that. Um, it was just such a great setting. Uh, it would have mm. been, uh, it would have been good to see what the ordinary life was like a little more than we got to see. Um, cause this is like, a. I would say it's like an epic fantasy because we're talking about multiple kingdoms here, um, big stakes, like we're, we're talking immortality and, and that sort of thing. Um, uh, and so it was a, a fitting setting for that, but also I think it could have, it could have been good to just dwell a bit in the, the ordinary, um, day to day life of the, the kingdom a bit more. Although yeah. it's not really like that's not really a thing that is suitable for this story. Like it would it would have to be its own thing. Um it was just I like the setting and it would have been interesting to spend more time in it. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I just wish like yeah, a few things had been um expanded upon and we had a bit more time to, you know, have time with the characters and understand them a little bit more. Mm. Well, she said in like the the author's note at the end that she was uh, she drew on like the work of Jung and that sort of thing for for the dream aspect, um, which was interesting because I didn't get like a strong like Jungian vibe from like the dream world or anything. Um, it was very much its kind of own vibrant place in a way. Mm. Mm. And and not like I, I wouldn't say it was like hugely symbolic in the, in the way that I would expect from from like something Jungian, for example. Um, but on the other hand, like it does a good job of showing how individual it is, so that things are very different depending on the dreamer. Yeah, I like that idea. Yeah. I like the idea of kind of an afterlife that's different for everyone because really if it was going to be like your perfect world that you went to after you pass away then it wouldn't be the same for everyone <laughs> no hmm. mine would apparently my aesthetic is goblin core according to the the youngins so <laughs> my my heaven or whatever it will be be just cute little cottage goblin core aesthetic or whatever it is <laughs> Very cute. I think Mel will appreciate that with her Goblin Emperor. <laughs> I mean, it's a great book. <laughs> what was it? Goblin Core, did you say? So the Zoomers or whatever the young kids do these days, <laughs> younger than me, by the way. <laughs> you are by far the youngest one here. I know, but there's ones who are really young. Like they show up on TikTok or whatever they are and they definitely look like they're in their teens because I went, I have not heard of these things because it just keeps on copying my, my, on my feed and I haven't actively been looking for it, but it keeps on going goblin core aesthetic, cottage core aesthetic. And I went, Oh, it's pretty much just, you know, cute little cottage vibes, but there's aesthetics for it now. Okay, right, all right. So yeah. goblin aesthetic, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I only really discovered it today and I went, oh my god, I'm so behind the times apparently. <laughs> apparently I should Google that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I was just thinking that. Hi to any of our younger watchers. <laughs> Hello. I am not on TikTok, by the way, so I will be able to help in that regard. <laughs> so yeah. 
Yeah, I think it was a bit of a short discussion this time around. Yeah. It's hard when it's like, it's a good book. Like it's not like when it's a terrible book, we have a lot to talk about because we pull mm. it apart. And when it's something that we gush over, sometimes it can be a bit longer too. But I think when it's just good, it's just and fine. There's n- yeah. And we all agree on why it's just fine. Yeah. yeah. And see, that's probably the other problem too. Like when we have people disagreeing with each other, then we have a more interesting discussion, but we're all like, yep. Yep. I agree with you. <laughs> we have the exact same thoughts. But yeah, it's all good. <laughs> I think. Um, like just to, to get, get clarity, because I have been uh, with the book club for a shorter time than you guys. And I had, uh, I think you'd previously done the Broken Earth trilogy. Was that right? Yes. I think yeah. we did at least the first. Uh, did we do all of them as book picks or did we? We did all three, yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. I think we did all three, but the last two in one part? I don't know. That's no, no, we did them all separately because we did the last one while we were in Adelaide for Meetup. All oh, right. Oh, that's why it all blends together for me. <laughs> <laughs> I have read all of them. I did read all of them this time. But, um, yeah. Yeah. We it was it became one of the first ones that we did like we somebody had picked the first one and everybody wanted to continue on but it was at that blending over point between um, when we used to do series reads at, on the off months and um, and so we sort of picked it up as an extra and was doing it but um, after that year we started we stopped doing series reads officially and it had to be people picked it because we had too many people. Yeah, and it was partly as well because we had a few series where we went, let's pick a series read, and we all read the first book and went, that book was nope. crap, and I don't want to read the rest of the series. <laughs> exactly. So no, I decided no. that the series reads had to be, we read the first one and liked it and decided we all wanted to keep reading yeah, rather than exactly let's that. just choose a series. Mm, exactly that. Um, thank that you very much, written. Jennifer Fallon. <laughs> no, okay, I don't know, terrible. Kirsten and I, I remember, we enjoyed the first one, but the second one was like... No. I didn't read the second one, I don't think. No, I didn't like the first one. <laughs> <laughs> I felt I so I betrayed because I love all our other books. Anyway. Yeah, well, that's why we sort of picked it, right? We had uh, People had sort of had good experiences with it. But anyway, that's mm-hmm. beside the point. Have you guys finished with the yeah. book? I... My, my point was that everyone has read some of N.K. Jemison before and so yes. it has probably coloured our experiences quite thoroughly. Mm-hmm. Yes, I do think expectations played a part. Like I made, I think we've kind of sounded a bit negative, but I don't think, I don't think it was a bad book by any means. I think maybe just my expectations were higher because I read the Broken Earth trilogy already, and that's a pretty phenomenal, phenomenal thing to kind of compare things to. Yeah, so, even her Hundred Thousand Kings and series, which the second book in that series is probably one of my favourite books of all time. So it is, yeah, sometimes the expectations can, yeah, can be a bit too high. I'm sure that is a point that we will revisit in our next month's discussion. Erin yeah. yeah. Morgan. Morgenstern. I think you may be right. <laughs> Spoiler alert. <laughs> Have you read hey, it? It might yet, divide Mel? the group. Sorry? Have you read it yet, Mel? I read it in February. <laughs> oh, okay. I've seen it. And then kept to very it. quiet. <laughs> Ooh, okay. Wait, have you read it on Goodreads yet? No? Um, I don't think I wrote a review. <laughs> I might have. Um. I'm curious to look it up now. No, don't, don't, don't. Read it first. Just read it first. I'm halfway through. But I haven't actually picked it up in over a week. I, I deliberately didn't say anything because I wasn't sure whether it was me, you know? Yeah. Hmm. I'm, yeah. It'd be interesting because, like, Night Circus was... We might as well just stop recording now, shouldn't we? Yeah, yeah. Let's, do you want to finish things off? Say goodbye. We can yeah. talk. We can talk about the Starla Sea next time. Yeah, we'll talk about that next time. So thanks for watching. Bye bye. Bye.